This video was made possible by the Content Creator Program. An MCOC champion is temporarily granted to select accounts for the purpose of allowing the community a first look at a new champion coming to the contest. All granted champions are removed from accounts before they are officially released to the community. Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to take a first look at Hitmonkey. Now, I haven't had a chance to play around with him a whole lot, but we're going to go over his attributes, his abilities, and talk a little bit about him. So here are his attributes. You can see the uh, champion tags, raw damage. He's a mercenary and he is a uh, small size. And let's take a look here, switch over to the percentages. And the one percentage that I always look at is block proficiency. And his block proficiency is pretty bad. And that gives me concern for his viability in end game content where the attack values are pretty high. However, Kabam has stated that they are going to be reworking at least act six and perhaps going forward so that the low block proficiency may not be as alarming as it seems. And to compare this, uh, we can take a look at Captain America Infinity War so you can see what a very, very good block proficiency looks like. So what you want in terms of block proficiency is somewhere around 70. That is what I would consider a good block proficiency. Captain America Infinity War has great block proficiency and I believe he has one of the highest, if not the highest in the game. All right, so let's go now to the synergies. And when I look at the synergies, I also look at who they have a synergy with. And I think, is this someone that I'm likely to bring on the team? So this first one, not in the face, <laughs> not in the face, not in the face. Uh, if you guys remember the tick. Uh, anyway, uh, hit monkey. If any bleed fails to apply to the opponent due to an immunity, hit monkey deals a burst of instant passive bleed damage for 50% of his attack. So with this synergy, he can deal with bleed immune champions. Not bad, but do you have a red Deadpool? I don't have a red Deadpool. And if I did have a red Deadpool, he would only be a four star red Deadpool. And then you've got X-Force who you do have a six star and he's not terrible, but he's not good. And he's not someone that I would willingly bring on the team. All right. Next up, Spider Monkey. You've got classic Spider-Man here who is decent but can be annoying if he's awakened. That auto-evade can really mess you up. So not a lot of people want to use him to fight offensively. Uh, but when fighting mercenary opponents, gain the effects of a level one Assassin Mastery. If the Assassin Mastery is already acquired, it instead activates when the opponent is below 25% of their maximum health. So basically, if you have the Assassin Mastery already, it's going to give you the benefits earlier. I believe it's 18% normally it would trigger Assassin, but with this synergy, it'll trigger at 25%. That can actually be useful in fights where you're dealing with someone with a large health pool. Uh, having them at 25% you'll be able to get them down quicker, all right? Next up, look at uh, Furry Frenemies, okay? And honestly, the only one there that caught my eye was Squirrel Girl. She's a lot of fun, but, you know, whether you're going to use her in endgame content, I know she would be really good in uh, Act 6.3 against that uh, Medusa, but that you have other options. So is this synergy worth it? Critical hits have a 30% chance to armor break the opponent for six seconds, reducing their armor rating by 700. So basically you're going to be hitting harder. 
Okay, that's the bottom line. Is it worth it? I don't know. No evil. Again, you've got three champions that people are unlikely to bring uh, with them. You know, Netflix Daredevil, he needs a buff. Hawkeye, I always loved Hawkeye, even before he was uh, reworked. But he's definitely not someone that I would bring normally with me. But he's underrated. Black Bolt, mainly if I had Medusa, I would bring Black Bolt for that synergy. So maybe there's a team that you could pull together with Black Bolt, Medusa, Hit Monkey. You know, there's a possibility there. The last three hits of each heavy attack are guaranteed critical hits. That can actually be fun, I'm thinking. All right, and then the final ones, just give him more crit and a perfect block chance. And I don't know, Luke Cage, I think out of those enemies there, I would bring on the team and uh, be happy to bring him on the team. And then you have Old Man Logan and Masaki, uh, but for a perfect block chance, I don't know if it's worth it. All right. Now, let's go ahead over to his abilities. Take a look at his signature ability here. Uh, while the opponent is above or at 25% health or is a mercenary, Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage last 3.5 seconds longer. Uh, while the opponent is below 25% or is a mercenary, uh, Hitmonkey passively reduces their defensive ability accuracy by 40% at, you know, SIG level 200. So that's actually interesting, but whether he needs to be awakened or not, I'm not sure at this time. Uh, I don't know enough about Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage. They seem pretty good, and we'll talk about them as we go on. Uh, but whether he's viable without being awakened, uh, time will tell. I need to uh, research and, and play around with him a little bit more. All right, so he has this ability, Nunchaka, or Nunchaku. Uh, Hit Monkey's uh, Nunchaku attacks are guaranteed critical hits against opponents who are not blocking. He uses them for his first medium hit, first light hit, and second medium hit. So basically, um, he's not going to crit through block, not like Corvus. But speaking of Corvus, one of the more common uh, combos is to do a medium light medium. In most fights with Corvus, that is the optimal rotation, you know, combination. Uh, that you want to use, medium, light, medium. Uh, you might do a medium light if the opponent has a larger health pool and you want to get in like two special three, uh, special twos. However, that's what it reminded me of. So with Hitmonkey, doing a medium, light, medium, you're going to get guaranteed crits if they're not blocking. So that seems to be a good rotation for him as well, uh, which means his... Hit counter is going to be low, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. All right. Landing three hit, uh, critical hits in a row deals internal damage to the opponent and inflicts a bleed debuff. Okay. Over uh, 4.5 seconds. That's not bad. I'm very much looking forward to playing around with him. All right. Monkey scheme, monkey do. Oh, kabam. Please stop doing that. Uh, but anyway... Landing three hit uh, critical hits in a row grants Hitmonkey a monkey scheme. This is unaffected by ability accuracy. Blocking or dodging an attack converts a monkey scheme into Assassin's Cunning, lasting, lasting eight seconds. Attacking or being struck converts a monkey scheme into Primal Rage, lasting eight seconds. Against mercenary opponents, monkey schemes are always converted into both Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage. So he's going to do some wonderful things against mercenaries. And when we uh, take him into Realm of Legends against Winter Soldier, our favorite practice dummy, Winter Soldier is a mercenary. Uh, while Assassin's Cunning or Primal Rage are active, monkey schemes cannot be gained. Okay, so while he has them on, you're not going to be getting any of the monkey schemes. All right. When he's knocked down, which we try to avoid, 
uh, it's going to activate Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage for six seconds. So ni a nice little nice to have. And, and again, we'll talk about Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage uh, as we go on here. Uh, you can see we're going to get into that. Uh, when an opponent evades, it'll activate Assassin's Cunning and refresh Primal Rage. Uh, this is unaffected by ability accuracy, but can't trigger more than once every 15 seconds. So we've been mentioning Assassin's Cunning, Primal Rage. What are they? What do they do? Here you go. First up, Assassin's Cunning. It's a passive. It'll prevent the opponent's evade effect, so he can handle those pesky evaders. Uh, he gains a 60% chance to evade an incoming basic attack while not blocking. Now, first of all, let me tell you something. When I see 60% chance to evade, that is not reliable to me. So I'm not going to stop blocking for a 60% chance to evade because that's a 40% chance I'm gonna get hit, okay? So I'm unlikely to say, hey, hit me, I'm gonna evade it. No, um, evading removes Assassin's Cunning. Uh, the bleed debuffs from Hitmonkey's Nunchaku can be critical bleeds, multiplying their potency by his critical damage multiplier. So kind of like uh, Domino with those crit bleeds. Uh, the chance for a critical bleed is equal to his crit chance. Fair enough. The chance for critical bleeds to occur is further increased for every three critical hits landed in a row during Assassin's Cunning. Okay, so that's all that he gets from having Assassin's Cunning active. Now let's talk about Primal Rage. Also a passive. He will ignore the opponent's armor and resistances. So when he's ignoring, ignoring their armor, that means he's going to hit harder. Okay. Uh, gain a 100% chance to purify one of each stun and damage over time debuff on hit monkey when one is gained or when primal rage activates. Purifying removes primal rage. So he is actually suicide friendly because he has the ability to shrug off those debuffs, the uh, double edge and the uh, liquid courage. So even though he doesn't have the immunities, he can shrug them off. So he is uh, suicide friendly. He still has to deal with the recoil, but that does make him somewhat suicide friendly because you can, for example, not fire off any specials and you don't have to worry about the recoil damage. All right. Light hits have a 20% chance to disorient the opponent, decreasing their block proficiency and defensive ability accuracy by 40% for six seconds. The chance to disorient is increased by 2.5% flat for each hit landed during Primal Rage, up to 45% total. So what it sounds like so far is you want to be aggressive with Hit Monkey because you're getting benefits as you are hitting them during these times where his Assassin's Cunning and his Primal Rage are active. Uh, special attack hits have the same chance to disorient for three additional seconds. All right, and here we go with his special attacks. So special attack one, if Assassin's Cunning is active, this attack has vigilance and cannot miss. Very, very nice. Uh, if Primal Rage is active, this attack is unblockable. Also very nice. Remember that we do have the ability, like when we're going up against the Mercenary, for Special Attack or, or Assassin Cunning and Primal Rage to be active at the same time. So that makes the Special 1 attack can't miss and unblockable. If this attack causes a miss or uh, to fail, so they try to, like Ghost or something like that, or it breaks through a block because it's unblockable, refresh Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage. Nice. And Hit Monkey gains Vigilance and Unblockable until Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage expires. Special Attack 2. If activated immediately after Hit Monkey lands a critical, all hits in this attack are guaranteed to be critical. So it sounds like a good rotation would be to build up to that Special 2, 
do a medium light, medium, followed by a special two. So you get guaranteed crits, medium light, medium, fire off the special two, and all of them will be criticals. We're going to try that. Um, Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage are paused during this attack. And then finally, special attack three, he'll gain a cruelty buff for 27 seconds, increasing critical damage rating by 1,636. So he's going to crit for a whole lot more. While this cruelty is active, striking the opponent pauses Assassin's Cunning and Primal Rage for 0.3 seconds. So if you're very aggressive, I'm thinking you can build up to that special two. Maybe you want to build up to a special three, get that cruelty buff, and then during that 27 seconds, build up to the special two. Then when you got one, medium light, medium, fire the special two off and do big boy damage. That's just a theory. I don't know how it's going to work because I've never tried it, but we're going to try it today. All right, so let's head into Realm of Legends and play around with Winter Soldier. All right, we're back and we're going to head into Realm of Legends Winter Soldier. And as you saw, I'm not going in with any synergies and we're just going to see how he does. Now, as I mentioned before, I want to try out that combination. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to build up to a special three, but I'm going to do medium light medium. You see that they're all crits and he's got a bleed on him. All right, so he's got critical bleeds, as you see. And I'm just going to try and build up to a special three here. All right, you know what? Let's just go ahead and uh, do some uh, full combos. Just because I was tired of uh, taking that long to get to the special three. All right. Okay, now I want to bait out that special... So I want to be able to get a lot of hits in. There we go. All right, now, let's see that special three. Oh. Oh, just cool. All right, so we've got 27 seconds. All right. Let's see, medium, light, medium. Let's try and build up to a special two really quickly here. And then we'll do a medium light medium and try to fire off the special uh, two. Okay. Guess I let up a little too early. Nope, he wasn't gonna let me do it. All right, let's try that again. Uh, you notice that he fired off his special so that I had no time. That's why I wanted to bait his specials out. Um, but what I need to do, I can see, is I need to rush to that special two. And not worry about the uh, combos in the beginning. All right? But look at that damage. That damage is, is nice. All right? We don't want him to be too uh, passive here. And see, he's eating away the clock. He's firing off his specials as much as possible which is annoying, all right? But we're getting there, we're getting there. There. Not bad, not bad. All right, and you can see the guaranteed crits again. All right, now I didn't show a um, special one, I don't think. Let's do this, this, this. There we go. Okay, now let's see a, a nice little heavy attack. Once he uh, calms down here. Come on. Come on. Oh, passive somebody, there we go. All right. I'm gonna do medium light medium, back up to a special three again. But you can see his damage is not bad. 
There we go. No. Let's get it. Perfect damage. Smack him up, smack him down. Then shoot him. Okay. Come on. It's not bad damage. I was holding block, but I knew he was going to do it. All right. Medium, light, medium, special two. KO. All right. Not too bad. He is a, a fun champion to play with here. Uh, I like him. You know, I was trying to find the, the right rotation for him and that sort of thing. Um, but he's definitely fun. Uh, I'll see what he goes for in the arena. Maybe I'll go for him. Maybe I won't. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. Uh, hopefully you saw enough of Hitmonkey to decide whether you want him in your roster or not. Uh, my final words on him. He seems fun. He's suicide friendly. Um, but while he's fun and he's okay and everything, uh, with my current roster anyway, there are other champions that I'd be more likely to use over him. So he's good, he's fun, but I don't know how useful he will be over other options that exist in the game. All right, but that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.